Yeah, I mean, obviously, if I give an opinion, it's my opinion rather than as a whole City Matters committee. But they, we haven't been given like more access than the supporters have. Um, I, my personal opinion is most of the questions that are being asked, they call it like uh, everyone's in favour of motherhood and apple pie, don't they? Do you want a bigger stadium with more fans? Tick, yes. Do you want it to be a, you know, do you want it to get the atmosphere going? Tick, yes. So at the moment, I think that the club have, Listen to what we've said so far. I've taken feedback from supporters I know. I have like a network of 500 City fans that I can like put things out to using Facebook and stuff. And they tell me what they think. I learn a lot from that. So I put my opinion in, but I also take soundings from what I kind of talk, talk about as my networks. And what, the, what comes across um, loud and clear is this is the major and probably final opportunity to have something that will resemble an old Kipax or, you know, or a cop or a whatever it might be, you know, a bit of an end. And if we don't take that now, we'll never have it. We'll end up with three tiers around. And the stadium's lovely, but it'd be great to have something like that. But the club needs to pay, play their part in that. It's not just about giving us a stamp and saying that's for that reason. They need to make the um, they need to probably make it all safe standing in my view. Again, my opinion, but that's come through on the networks that I talked to. They probably need to get pricing right at that end. They probably need to give people the chance to move there over a period of time and guarantee you can move with your your brother if you stand next to him or your wife or whatever. So they need to the club need to make that happen. It's not just about what they build. I think the first design that we've seen does show two tiers. And like, obviously, in a perfect world, we're building the ground from scratch. We'd probably have one great big one because the Tottenham one works really well. I think technically that's difficult because everybody will probably know, but the lower tier is below the ground at our current stadium. So people walking off the street for people watching this and listening who don't know, and you're on the back row. So to take that out technically is massively difficult. But they've listened to what has been said and they're talking about basically a great big two-tier two high single stand. But if the club needs to put things in place to make it happen, it's not just about building it. The acoustics need to be right if we want to make it a bit noisy. And don't forget, you know, there's, no, there's nothing that says that people in other parts of the ground can't do the kind of jumping around atmosphere bit that, you know, and that happens all, a lot of grounds. So if we keep the away fans where they are, which I suspect, again, technically is likely the police won't want to start messing about with the design. If they're down there, we'll end up with something at one end called the Aguero end or the, you know, the new Kipax or whatever we end up calling it. That'll be kind of banners and flags and pretty much what the kind of 1894 people tend to do. But some people will still want to be near the away fans. So it's not going to ruin things. I think the, the the plans I've seen so far will enhance it. The devil will be in the detail. And I think they need to get the food and drink, pricing, safe standing and pre-match entertainment right. You know, I don't think it's the family end that. I think that needs to be a bit more raucous, get the thing going and let the fans, you know, get the atmosphere going from that end. I mean, South Stand do a great job at the moment. But I don't go and sit in there. That's not, it's, it's not for everybody, you know. You don't necessarily have to have the entire ground jumping all the time. So I like where I sit and I enjoy watching the game. And I love the fact that South Stand make all the noise. And if we can make it happen down in this like new North Stand or whatever it gets called, uh, all well and good. I think the, the, the fans, I think the club are going in the right direction on it at the moment. Just need to keep them going in that direction. And hopefully they'll come and ask the supporters for, um, their opinions on more detailed stuff about things that we can influence. There's no point us influencing everything. The club needs to build it and fund it. But I think they can come backwards and forwards to the uh, support and ask them what they think about various things. From what I've heard, of course, at that end, uh, the, the the new North Stand end, there yeah. will also be an integrated hotel. There'll be a 3,000 capacity covered city square. That's um, right. I don't know what else there is going to be at that end. Um, is 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 that stuff you've looked at, Mark? And is that something that you approve of as well as a group? Yeah, yeah so far, so good. I mean, the, the club shop will have to move because of where it is. I mean, basically, if we extend the north stand and we have a covered... I mean, City Square's got cover already, but they've kind of made use of the space that's already there that just happens to be either side of the club shop. 
So the, the, the way I see it is they're going to clear the site, basically, and build what they'd like to build. And, and then we'll have a big covered area for 3,000 supporters. So if you think about it, even when it's lashing it down, you've got 3,000 fans who could be in there, dry, eating and drinking. I think the entertainment needs to be, you know, pretty much entertainment needs to be right at that end. I think it needs to be more football, if you know what I mean. Big screens with a match on that's usually playing before us. You know, if we if we kick off at three, show the half past 12 game. Um, you know, the, all sorts of things they can do. And, they call it the offering in the sort of language, which I don't like loads. But, you know, getting that type of thing right matters. It's not just about building this stand. Um, but I think they'll clear the site. They'll move the club shop somewhere. That's not been decided. But there'll be one, I'm sure. Um, the museum hardly ever gets visited. It's basically part of, as I understand it, they just use it as part of the stadium tour. I think they could make that a place that they could change exhibitions all the time, make it somewhere you might want to go. Um, as opposed to just being part of the store. So there's, a, there's loads of things we can do, but it's all about match day. Don't forget, we've got Co-op Live, the music venue opening soon. So part of what the club wants to do, and I, and I approve this massively, is make the Etihad campus, as they call it, a place that people go like f f four or five times a week. You know, when there's a concert on, they can do corporate, can't they? You know, people can go and see whoever they go to see and then get a corporate sort of visit to city's great corporate facilities before they go in there. So it works to make the whole campus make money and be active, you know, most days of the week all through the year. I think it's a, it's a brilliant thing. And we're miles ahead of everybody else in doing that. All sounds brilliant. There is one thing that keeps coming to my mind, which is that once Corp Live opens, once the stand is increased in size, where on earth is everybody going to park? Has that been discussed? Transport, I think, is the biggest problem with it. So whether it's walking to the game that they like to talk as though everybody wants to walk to the game, of course they don't really. Parking, public transport. I'm, I've, 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 I've actually made some proposals to the club to try and improve public transport. And I've got a meeting with them next week that I've been invited to to go and talk to them about that. So I've been, I'll, I'll be going out again to networks and asking people for their ideas. But the truth is we're not getting a new tram line any anytime soon. You know, there's not big infrastructure coming in it's going to be and 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 we're not getting masses and more parking and stuff so if you want my honest opinion the actual build of it and the concept behind the build is great public transport is where they just haven't got i don't think they've got a good answers to the questions on that yet and that's something we need to push and push and push you two, Tony and Amy, have been listening to that, and it's great to have Mark giving us a, a you know, quite a good up sum of it all. Really, I, I've had a bit of a look at it, so I can see some of the things that that Mark's uh, telling us. But still, um, it's very interesting to hear it from that perspective. What, what? Let, let's start with you, Amy. What's your immediate reaction? You, you go in the south stand because of the atmosphere, I guess, and because you like to sing. Are you likely to be easily uprooted and moved to the other end? Would you buy into that? And do you like that concept? I uh, I like my seat. I don't want to move. <laughs> um, just um, going towards the uh, concert thing venue. Uh, I have an opinion on that. I don't. It's my opinion. It's it's just my thing. I actually put in for it to not be built. Um. Only because I go to concerts quite a lot. I go to concerts as much as I go to the football. Um, and I've been going to the arena since it opened. Uh, and I was 10 years old when I went to, when it opened. And obviously after the arena attack, I know a lot of uh, American artists decide, have decided they don't really want to come because of what happened to Ariana. Um, I personally would have liked the Manchester Arena to have been rectified and made properly safe, blah de blah de blah My reasoning for not liking the co-op one where it is, is concerts happen at the same time football's on. Saturday night, Friday night, Sunday night, in the week how many people are going to be around either at the at the arena or at city traffic pollution which 
everyone at City is supposed to be really on about, about, you know, as, as not polluting the planet, blah, de, blah, de, blah. Security is, police have got enough to deal with when football's on. They're going to have to be at the arena as well. I just think that it's the most, it's in the most stupidest place ever. And that is my opinion. And I don't, you know, I'm, I'm sure, you know, everyone else has got an opinion about it. But I think that the way that what happened at the arena was absolutely diabolical. It was awful. It was, it was scary. I was due to be at the arena that week and it happened on the Monday. I was due to be there on the Friday and the Saturday. That's how much that space was between what happened. And it is so scary. Go, you, you want to enjoy yourself. You want to enjoy going to a concert. And you still have that anxiety now when you come out of the arena of something happening. And you're still going to have that anxiety wherever you go. You have anxiety, you know, you have the football and things like that. I just think that where it is, is going to cause so many problems. And, um, but obviously it's being built and there's nothing I can say, nothing I can do. But my, my personal thing is that the, uh, the Manchester New Evening News Arena should have been made better, should have been made safer. They could have done the concept that they've got at City at the arena. You know, City Group could have bought the arena and changed that. I just think, in my opinion, it's just, it's just, it's just so unsafe. It's untrue. Fully, fully enough, I agree with you. Um, I actually think that I'm astonished they've got planning for forgetting, and I'm not even touching on security. Do you know what? I hadn't thought about security part of it, and I think you put it really eloquently there, Amy, about that part of it. You know, coping with it and. And not just the, just coping with it when there's a football match going on and all those people milling about. I hadn't even thought of that. And that's a really, really good point. But even from a transport perspective, how crazy is it? It wouldn't happen in Germany, I'll tell you that. If you build a venue, but you don't build public transport for it, how on earth have they got planning permission for a brand new? 30, it's 23,000 people plus 7,000 yeah. coming to our stadium. That's 30,000 new people coming to the area. Yeah potentially around the same time. The club say some funny things about it won't be at the same time, but I don't buy that. I agree with you. Well, I don't either. Yeah. But the town had got permission without public transport being, but there should have been a, a, a new station for it or a new spur line or something to do it. So I'm I mean, a bit the amazed same... they got it, but we're, we're, we're stuck with it now. Yeah. We are I mean, it's the, same, it's the same at Old Trafford Cricket Ground. If you're going to watch a concert at Old Trafford, you're stuck with United fans as well. Like it's the same, it's the same, same situation. Obviously, yeah. they're further apart, but you end up in the same tram stop. Uh, you know, it, and coming to the ground on on Saturday, I have decided to never get on the tram ever again. There is so many small children, I will say, that are causing absolute havoc on the tram. And you've got, there was a little lad from Burnley with his dad and you tell he was brought up right because he was absolutely scared of these kids messing about on the tram. And it's awful. You should have a pleasant journey to the, to, to the game. I personally think there should be police or somebody on the tram when this football on. It's, it's dangerous. And it's not even football fans that are causing the trouble. It's mindless jobs. And I, I think that, everything at the moment the security is just is just awful and and it's it's actually quite scary lots of passion in that answer tony what do you make of what you've just heard I, i'm speechless to be honest really but obviously it doesn't oh it doesn't always help when you're on a podcast like this though does it so um i i, I totally agree with the things that amy has said and and, and mark have said and the infrastructure has, has really got to be as key as, as anything else. And, and it does worry me, um, again, like you say before, because I've often got the tram um, to the stadium and from the stadium. And even coming out of the stadium, um, there's no real, it, it doesn't, there's not really any thought to it. Um, and, and you're actually getting on the tram as, as a football supporter with the general public when coming out of games. 
because it's whatever tram turns up. It doesn't seem to be as organised as it does in London because you look at London when it's evacuating uh, the amount of people and it, although it seems really large queues and that when you're coming out of Wembley to get on your, your, your respective train to go where you're going back to, it just seems very organised because they think, oh, we've got 90,000 people, let's put on the extra transport and, and ensure that we get the, uh, the football fans or whatever it is away from the stadium as quick and as safely as possible. And we haven't got that right at, at, at City, to be honest. And it is a free for, and it's a free for all. When you're on that platform, it's a free for all. So adding more people to it, it you know, you hope that something doesn't happen, but it's there and it's waiting to. Um, and that needs to be addressed, to be honest. We need to have proper transport that, that's designed then to move people quickly and safely out of the stadium. So ends that we can then ensure that the public and that are, are able to access it. And obviously from from a, a you know a, a theatre going with people or from a music venue, that needs to be, as Mark said or, or Amy said, that we probably need an extra spur, an extra line, which obviously doesn't look like it's coming. So yeah, it, it is worrying from that aspect. Yes, I totally agree. I think I think what people don't realise is that. I mean, if you look at what they say about the new venue and the extension to our north stand, that when you look at the transport um, um, in things that they're going to put in place to support it, they are trialling some shuttle buses, which haven't started yet. Hopefully we'll have trial some shuttle buses that the club will be either running or behind running, you know, so not the passenger transport exec. So that's positive, although let's wait and see what it looks like. Uh, and the only other thing to say is we're in discussions with Metrolink. Well, it's only my opinion. I agree with Amy and I agree with my mate Tony. Here. They shouldn't have been in discussions now when the thing's being built. The discussion should have been before they were given planning permission. So yep. for me, I'm amazed that the, the, the local authority gave them planning permission without making sure that the, the obvious service, Metrolink, could support these extra 30,000 people. Just to tell you what the club will say, so you've got a, a rounded picture, the club will say that um, they say, not me, by the way, don't shoot a messenger, they say that, well, uh, there aren't that many occasions when City play and it clashes with a concert at the oh, at the um, the new co-op venue. But I counted last season and we had 12 games at home in the evening, which 12, that's a lot, you know, in one season. Just that, That's just during the week. That's not like 5.30 kickoffs on a Saturday, which could easily collide. Um, and some of those games, they've come out of a draw in the Cup. So you find out 12 days before you're playing at home in the League Cup against potentially Liverpool or something. Uh, they say that they're going to kind of stagger the start times so that the concert will start either early or probably maybe start later. So that's what the club say. But that's what they've told the local authority to get them to get give planning permission. And it's my opinion, I don't buy that. I think there'll be clashes and I think it'll be, um, mm. it's going to be very difficult, very, very difficult. Yeah. I, I I was at, I went to see Robbie Williams a few weeks back and I had to, which I never do, I had to leave City early to go to the concert. So there, there's, I know that I, that was at the arena, but there's your, there's your clash of a Saturday night football match and a Saturday night concert concerts and football will happen on the same day and I don't get how they think that that won't happen so they're going to stagger the time but I just think it'll clash I think you know people coming for people who come for concerts at Manchester I know you're local but we get people coming from Glasgow to exactly. come and stay yeah. You know? yeah. so people go early you know so staggering yeah. the time it's not like football fans who do tend to arrive in the hour before the game especially your regulars tend to an hour you know, yeah. they, they have a different pattern. You know, people are coming here for like a whole weekend and fitting a concert yeah. in on a Saturday. Yeah. They could go, they've no idea what time they're going to want to get on a tram to go to this concert. Oh, it could yeah. be at five o'clock for a nine o'clock gig. Well, so, I mean, yeah. yeah. Have... The other thing I'd chuck into this as well, because you mentioned Germany before and, and they are very good at uh, getting themselves um, right for this sort of thing. Uh, obviously, I, I'm a follower of Schalke. And when they play their games at their arena, um, because their trams are state-owned, so to speak, a bit like the you know the, the trains, etc., uh, they're able to uh, structure it so that when a game finishes, they can literally have 
50 trams stacked up on a, on a siding almost so that when the game finishes, one, 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 one. Yeah. Now, Metrolink is a privately owned company. So Correct. to a certain extent, if somebody pays them to do it, maybe. But the yeah. trouble is, and I don't want to get too much into the intricacies of this, but because my dad worked on railways and I've always had a fascination for, for transport, <laughs> if you're going to pay somebody a shift, right, then they, they might have to work an extra eight hours and obviously in a private company, who's going to, going to want to pay a driver or get a tram? And they might not have enough trams anyway because yeah. they'll only have enough to operate that system. So the tram might come every 10 minutes, but they haven't got enough trams to send them out every two minutes because they can't, when would you use them any other time? The, the, the depre just to depress you even more, Ian, uh, the, the, the line at, um, that goes out to Ashton, which obviously serves the stadium, as a 12 minute service. So that, that's not good for a, a football stadium empty and I'll kind of get people there. They only run a six minute service. And I'm not even joking. This is the word used by City when I asked about it quite a while ago as a favour. So it's not, they're not contractually obliged to serve the public who use the stadium. They yeah. literally do it as a, when it's, they do it as a favour, that was the phrase he used. So City talked to Metrolink and say, we could really do with some more trams. Um, would you do it, please? And Metrolink go, yeah, we'll do it when we can. Now, yeah. most of the time, they do run a six-minute service for the hour before and after the uh, after the ground um, after kickoff. So, to be fair, it works to a degree. But when that falls down, nobody's in trouble because it's a favour. So it's not a contracted service where City can say you meant to run every six minutes. Why are you not doing that? They go, well, it's a favour. You're lucky you're getting the trams at all. And that's the dynamic that's going on. And it is because it's a private sector contract. And, you know, the, 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 the PTE, you give out the contracts to the people who run Metrolink, they don't really want a six-minute service on the Ashton line the rest of the time because there isn't the demand for that. The 12-minute service, I think, has been worked out as, as works for the people who live there. So this is the whole thing that we're dealing with and the plonking a an extra 30,000 people at the Etihad on a Saturday night, potentially. So it isn't a good look and it isn't a good start, but it's coming. So from yeah. my perspective, I agree with Amy, but I've got no choice but to roll yeah, sleep. No, it's more of a logistics thing. Like when you, you know, I have that sort of mind, you know, I think about the, 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 the stresses and the strains, not the fact, oh, we're getting a new arena. Oh, we're getting a this. Oh, we're getting a that. I think logically, like, you know, about the safety aspects, you, you know, Martin Hett's mum has put in for the law to have security better at these places. And this is what I'm worried about, that, you know, it's the security about it. it you know, I, I'm thinking about the safety of us fans and the concert goers. Well, I'll tell you what, Amy, I promise you, I'll raise that because I hadn't thought of that at all. I'm first to admit it. You've got a better angle on it than me. Being an old git, I don't go to gigs as much as I used to. So, <laughs> honestly, I promise I'll, I'll ask the question and, and make sure you find out what they say to me. Thank you. 